Hey everyone, uh, it's Dally Daydream, and I am back to hustle some more cats. Uh, this is a continuation of uh, 12 Games of Giftmas, uh, where last we left off, Avery Gray bit the dust. Um, I chose an incorrect option, and um, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made by me. So we're going to start over, um, and we are going to not die this time. I mean, theoretically. Okay, so we've done a whole bunch of this before. <clears throat> so just to give you a brief rundown, this is Avery. She is living in her aunt's place until she can get her own. To do that, she is going to need to get a job. Which, of course, is easier said than done, especially when all the jobs being advertised are, um... Well, they're on Craigslist, basically. Oh, and of course, Avery lives with her cat, Mochi. Who is, uh, a human trash bag, I believe was the term. Human trash bag? Cat trash bag, I suppose. I think there might actually be an option to skip scenes, but I'm not sure. Whoa! Yeah, there is. Hey guys, I found the skip scene option. Whoa, stop, stop! Okay, I actually want to... Okay, we're good, okay, we're good. We have got to the cat's paw. And yes, they are indeed hiring. As luck would have it. And uh, just because I'm slightly... No, wait, we're okay. Sorry, folks, I've been having some issues with my uh, software lately and I just wanted to check that my voice was still picking up. And here we meet... It is... Come on, there he is, it's Landry! Hi, Landry. I accidentally romanced Landry last time through no fault of my own. And yes, we would like to hear about how the cafe works. Because I'll, I'll let you in on a secret. If Landry doesn't tell you, then Graves tells you, and Landry does a better job. Landry also just seems really kind of caught off guard if you go straight into inquiring about the job. Um, so... I, I think this way makes him a bit happier. He's good at giving the tour. No, no. I'm really good with cats. I'm trying not to flirt with him this time. Liking cats will help. You know, coexisting with cats. Liking and having a cat are, are not exactly the same thing. I would indeed like some coffee, even though I do not drink coffee. And we now have obtained coffee. Item get. Have I told you guys a story about the one time I tried to drink coffee? I'm going to tell you, just in case you haven't heard it yet. Um. I went, uh, had a nice meal out after a play with Dave, courtesy of my dad, which is very nice of him. And um, I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to get some coffee because I'm a grown-up and I haven't, you know, tried it properly yet and this is probably a good place to do so. Got the coffee, came with the little packets of sugar and the um, little, um, oh hi Graves, and the little, um, and, and the little, uh, little dingy milk creamer thingies. And um, let's just say by the time I was done with it, it was more milk and sugar than it was coffee. And it was still too bitter for me. Dave very kindly drank it for me. Dave doesn't like coffee either. Well, here's Graves. Complete with spooky theme music. I don't think he would appreciate my coffee story, do you? And here I am once again, taken aback by heterochromia. And he gets to quote poet me. Because 
because he's just not goth enough if he doesn't quote Poe. <laughs> it's more common in cats than humans. I don't get it. I haven't got to that part of the game yet, so I don't get it. I mean, you haven't even shown me the papers yet that actually explain the curse, allegedly. Oh, excuse me. Cakes. Oh, hey, I think I see the key lime pie cake as well. Awesome. And we're going to get more coffee. It is true that Hayes does make very awesome coffee. I mean, obviously, I can't taste it myself, but, you know, I'm going by the fact that Hayes is amazing. I'm hazing? No, that was bad even for me. So, no pressure. Just a job interview that's happening right off the bat. I haven't even had to hand in my CV, or resume, I guess you call it in the States. <laughs> We're not starting without coffee. I mean, you can talk. Hello, Ninja Hayes. He's one of those very skittish kind of cats. Put a cucumber next to him and he'll jump ten foot in the air. Don't actually do the cucumber thing with cats. Um, apparently, if you, you put a cucumber or any kind of object near a cat um, while they're eating and they turn around and just jump into the air, it's because they're... Um, from what I heard, it's because they're, you know, they let their guard down to eat, right? So then something is just intruding on their space and they're like, what? So it scares them and it's not nice. What I'm saying is be nice to cats and haze, mostly haze, but also cats. Yee, cappuccino cat. <gasps> cat Pacino. Ah. I am not sorry for that one. Okay, so the interview. Um, I'm going to try and romance Mason this time, as I wanted to do last time, but accidentally got a Landry instead. So I am going to try and um, keep her in mind when I answer these. I'm pretty sure she transforms into a tabby. I don't know any other languages, and I don't think speaking the language of dance would appeal to Mason. I'd be surprised if it did. Uh, marine animal. Um, let's go with orca. What genre would I use to describe myself? Punk. I'm not dead, just resting. Rate you as an interviewer 7.5, like I always do. <laughs> Teen wolves, like I always do. <laughs> ah, seriously, werewolves, man. So I start tomorrow. This was a very quick check, a very quick interview, no background check or anything. Satanic Pact, though, of course. <clears throat> I'm wondering if it's okay to skip now or if I'm going to miss a choice if I do that. I think... I'll probably just skip when I get home. Hello Landry. I now work with you. And you look so very nervous. He keeps saying that he thought I knew. I don't think he I don't think he believes that. He's like, you I, I thought that Graves maybe told you about the cat thing. It's like, well then why do you specifically not mention the cat thing any time you're around me? Alright, let's skip. Hi, Hayes Cat. Hayes Cat? Sorry, Graves Cat. Oh my. Okay, Mochi is waking me up. And here I am back at work. Whoa, okay, stop. Stop. There we go. <laughs> Hello, co workers. Hello, Reese. 
and we get all the introductions. We have Hayes again, Nervous Kitty. I've been um, romancing him in an off-camera playthrough and he is just so adorable. In addition to being a barista, he's also a poet. And here we have Finley. I'm probably going to go through this game and romance everyone at some point, but Hayes and Mason are my favourites. And I quite like Landry as well, he's pretty awesome. Mason is the best though. I mean, I say this not having played her route yet, but... Like, this is Mason. <laughs> say hello to the new girl, Mason. Nod, nod, nod. And Reese is introducing himself. The catest of all cats. Since he actually, you know, knew what he was signing up for. Okay. Now I can't recall. Oh, that's right, we get to have breakfast. Now I don't think anything happens here, so... Oh, that's right, there is a choice here. Um, yeah, go on then. So it stops, of course it stops at the choices, why wouldn't it? Where should I sit? However, I am given a place to sit. And we get to sit down and eat. I get to try frittata for the first time. Mason, uh, <laughs> Mason tells me that I, I eat here now and pizza is not for breakfast and offers to save me from Reese. Obviously, I'm going to go after Mason. So I'll go and see how she's doing. Bye, Reese. <laughs> I'm in a kitchen. This can only end badly. Okay, so Hayes is cleaning. This is at the end of my first day of work and there wasn't much happening. I think... No, nope, I want to help you. I'm going to stay and I'm going to pester you because I love you. There's got to be something I can help with. It is really sweet that she saved me from Reese though. I mean, I'm sure Reese's uniform is fine. I mean, after all, we see what Graves comes up with later. It's got to be better than that. And now I am dancing with boxes. And here we see the wild Mason performing the elusive Mason laugh. Okay, get rid of the boxes. And she's so cute. She's like almost, almost blushing, and it's adorable. <laughs> yeah, you have plenty of muscle of your own. All right, so now we're gonna look after, or sorry, look and see where Landry went. We're meeting Hash Browns. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip past that. Oh, and that's right. Um, I was thinking the um, there's a whole bunch of very unique cat names here. Since this game was kickstarted uh, last year, I think it was. I'm guessing that um, certain backers got to name certain cats. Now there are some very cute names in there. I like Bramble Pelt. I think that's a nice name. The day did not pick up. Oh, that's right. It wasn't uh, the first day of work. It was. The beginning of the first day of work and now now it's the end of the first day of work it's almost as if I should pay attention to the game I'm playing all right 
let's skip one bit. And out I go. Okay, and we head home, and oh boy. Yep. That's fine. That is just fine. Now we get to find out about the curse. I am going to go after, I believe in the last video I went after Hayes. This time I'm going to go after Reese. Wait, come on, come on little cat. Reese's cat suddenly stops, turns around, and plants his haunches onto the pavement. He looks up at me with a surprisingly bored expression. Oh, come off it, Avery. You can stop tailing me now unless you were that bent on following me home. Ah! Uh, the cat is talking. Why? Why do you look so surprised? You knew it was me, right? Well, what? What? Come on, my cat self and my human self look so similar. They're both equally gorgeous. How did you not put two and two together? Oh my god, Reese, you look so smug. Of course I didn't put two and two together. Who the hell is going to think, oh, of course, he is also a cat? That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. I can't believe I'm having this conversation right now. Uh, I don't know why I expected you to know anything about witches. I mean, look at you. Hey, I have grey hair. That's plenty witchy. What's that supposed to mean? It means I don't think you know much at all. Fine. Graves obviously did a trash job of explaining- Yes! He didn't explain at all, Reese. So, all the work is up to me. Again. I get the feeling that he deals with this a lot. Everyone at a cat's paw is under a curse. Once we leave the premises, we turn into cats. The curse is likely tied to the cafe itself, though I don't think anyone else knows how. This is probably the most absurd thing I've ever heard. But it's also sort of hard to deny because a cat is telling it to me. <sighs> so, everybody? Graves too? Who knows? I've never seen him as a cat. But I haven't seen him do a lot of things. Haven't seen him go to the bathroom, but you have to assume he does that. Does that mean... Am I going to be cursed too? I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I would. How do I end up not cursed? If I knew, I'd be a lot taller and less furry now. Not that much taller, Reese. How do you even get a cat curse? Didn't you hear me? Witches. Believe it or not, this area is full of them. I'd, I'd go with the or not, but I can't really come up with any more plausible reasons. This is absurd. I've just had a long day and my brain's leaking out my ears, that's all. I must... I might just be imagining this. Are you done then? I have things to do. What, well, like chase birds? Cute. Look, if it makes you feel better, we can talk about this more at work tomorrow. With everyone else. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Introduce me to all of the talking cats. Just don't be late again. I wasn't late. I was very... on. T I was a little... I was just on time. I get the feeling that if he had the shoulders for it, Reese would be shrugging right now. Instead, he rolls his head to the side. He stands back up, takes a grand leap of a trash can, and then again to the fence. Whatever you say. Good night, Avery. With that, he's gone. Uh, good night. Talking cat. Claiming to be Reese. Sun's barely gone down, but I'm capital letter done with today. This is too much. And now Mochi is possibly talking to me. But we're just going to nope away from that. Nope, nope. Nope. Nobody nope. Okay. Now, ah, uh, right. So when I wake up, we get... I wonder if I, uh... Yep, there we go. Does not pause on illustrations.
And here we are, everyone's here for Jelly Donut Day. And I demand to speak to Graves, and everyone's like, Oh, hey, Avery. <laughs> what up? What do you mean, cat curse? Who said anything about a cat curse? Okay, so you know about the cat curse. Come on, Avery, you should have known this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I didn't read the contract. Obviously, I didn't read the contract. It's like, they're not called Dungeon Lords, they're called Dungeon Masters, get it right. So I'm probably going to storm after a graves. Now, Hayes is like, oh, oh no, she mad. Oh, she mad. And everyone has followed me in here, and I mostly just want to talk to the one person who isn't here. It is Graves' fault. It is so Graves' fault. Okay, um, I am just going to go with your right again. Just so we can progress the story faster. If, um, if you say you quit, uh, they will try and stop you. And then you can either listen to them or double down. And doubling down is fun, but it ends the story right quick. I say fun. Depends on your definition of fun. Hi, Mason. Are you going to placate me with food? Because I wouldn't mind that. I'm not sulking. I am having a slight crisis of humanity in that I'm losing it. Becoming a cat, apparently. Give me time out. Hey, Hayes. What up? So, and now Hayes is being very sweet and uh, empathizing with the anxiety. And he is one of the ones who actually likes being a cat. He's very sweet, and if I were doing his romance route, I would, uh, you know, get into further conversation with him, and he would talk about his anxiety a bit, but we're going to leave him be, um, because we are not following his route today. And now we get to see Finley's cat forum. And now I say, there we go. Hello, Jelly Donut. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Let's see here. Ah, oh, and here we go with, um... Yep, yeah, everyone's getting set up and ready for Jelly Donut Day. We're in... Oh my goodness. Yep, we are going to be positive about this. We can do this. We are not turning into a cat just yet, so it'll be fine. And it was a busy day today. Sorry, it still is a busy day. And we come in here, and we get to talk to Mason, and look at the donuts. But we're not going to take a donut because that would be wrong. Do not take the donut. Just look longingly at the donuts. Like donuts, huh? Of course you do. Hi, Mason. I was not contemplating stealing a donut. And she's offering to make me donuts. Can you make me pink donuts? What did you expect from me? Chocolate? Vanilla? Custard? Mason's like, I do the donuts here, kid, not you. I, my, my, my guess is that whenever she see, she says, hmm, it means she cares. Because she says it a lot. Thank you, Mason. Okay, so let's wait some tables. And, uh, see Finley entertaining the crowd. Oh, that's right, we get to go down to the spooky basement. 
spooky basement time. Love the clutter. And we go ahead and find the coffee beans, but we also find the cat swirly book. It's like, it's someone's diary. Let's look inside. It's like, do you understand ciphers? I mostly ask because if you do. <laughs> oh, I've been interrupted by a mason and you do not want to invoke the wrath of mason. So up we go. No, I just, I don't have insane muscles like you do, so I was having trouble carrying the bag of coffee beans. <laughs> you would like the spoopy basement. If you came across a ghost, you'd probably just punch it. And... We good. And I am being flirted with by a young lady with confetti in her hair. Not confetti, sprinkles. Now, I am going to be nice, but I am not going to flirt back. And I go get coffee. Because I know how to make coffee, who says I don't? It's because I can't make little foam cats. And let's skip forward through some of Finley's dialogue, since we've said this already. Up oh, now we go and we check on Mason and Hayes. So there's Mason. Um, you really busted your butt today, thank you. It's my job. She's already got one foot out the door. She seems irritated that I interrupted her. Well, I'm gonna interrupt her some more! Um, do you want me to walk you home? She gives a sharp snort of a laugh. You think I'm gonna get chased or something? Stray dog's gonna come get me? But no, I thought it would be nice. We could talk and stuff. We're talking now. I guess so, huh? Well, where are you going? Do you live near here? Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Is that all? Uh, well, I guess so. G good night, Mason. Yeah. She disappears around the corner, but a second letter second later I catch a glimpse of a lanky orange cat with a crooked tail. Maybe that's her. Looks like she's heading in the same direction as my apartment. I wonder if her neighbours? Mm, probably not. Kind of silly to assume. And we are going to quickly let Hayes know that he can come join us if he wants. And let's push on to the next scene. And just scoot, scoot Hayes closer to everyone else. You make friends. Oh, hello again, black cat. Meow. Yes, yes, I am a cat. Meow. And Mochi is still talking to me. And at this point, I find the diary again. Well, the witchcraft book? Who knows? Ah, and... I am able to decipher it using the little bookmark that Graves Cat gave me. And we go forward. Now, it's pretty early um, since I've managed to yep, reset my sleeping schedule, which uh, yeah, can happen sometimes, speaking from experience. So I'm going to go get some coffee and whatnot, because I'm a coffee drinker now, apparently. And something to eat. Now, I have a choice to go to uh, the cafe or the corner store. Um, I have gone to the cafe before and not found Mason there as an option to talk to. So we're going to go to the co corner store instead. I eat at the cafe all the time. Why not get some variety? Mmm, donuts. This place is really cute and handy. I'm not really a grocery shopping kind of person, but if I was, I'd do it here. The snacks are choice, the little bakery b window behind the counter has some surprisingly delicious donuts. I think the owner makes them himself. Aw, oh, a baker. The owner's a real gruff guy, but I bet he's the type that gets favourite customers and warms up to them. All I know is I'm not one of his favourites yet. 
he's at the counter reading the paper right now. He somehow manages to spare me a glance as I approach, but goes back to the sports section while I pour myself a cup of coffee. Good morning. It sure is starting to get cold out, isn't it? You want donuts or what? Uh, he reminds me of Mason. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, uh, chocolate and a uh, jelly donut, please. <laughs> jelly donut. He turns to pluck the donuts from the display case, and that's when I see it. Her, to be precise. Oh, she's so cute. The scraggly orange cat curled up and sleeping on top of an overturned milk crate down by the owner's feet. That's... Mason? Oh, she mad. The old man didn't hear me, but the cat sure did. Her eyes fly wide open and her pupils shrink to the size of a paper cut. I start to mouth, what are you doing here, to her, but she's having none of this. Her crooked tail puffs to twice its size and thrashes wildly about behind her. Even as a cat, her stare is intimidating. I know it's her, and I know if I don't shut up, she's going to come at me. Here's your donuts. What did you do to my cat? I think that might be your daughter. Uh, nothing. I think she just doesn't like the way I look or something. Anyway, bye! I leave the money on the counter and make a hasty retreat. Again, about do not invoke the wrath of Mason. How weird. I didn't expect to see Mason, of all people, to be some store mascot. Something weird is going on here. I hope it's not so weird I can't go there anymore. This donut is delicious. I was going to say don't tell Mason, but of course, this is Mason's, probably Mason's family's store. I decide to head over to the cafe for a bit. I hope they won't get on my case about having outside food. I kind of think they won't really care, though. Mason is probably the only one who would give me grief about that, and, well... Well, maybe, like, her dad taught her how to bake or something. When I get there, I already see some movement inside. Normally, I'd be weirded out by people hanging out at work on their day off, but a cat curse and all? I get it. Hayes opens the door for me. It looks like he's the only one here right now, actually. I see him glance down to the coffee in my hand. Where'd you get that coffee? <laughs> Where'd you get that coffee, friend? Oh, from the corner store a few blocks away. It, it's on my way here? You could have come here. Oh, no, Hayes, don't be offended. He looks a little disdainful. <gasps> Are you turning your nose up at my coffee? I kind of like knowing that such a shy guy has a bit of a snobby side, though. <laughs> There's something hiding in that shell for sure. I sink into my favourite spot on the big circle couch and take a big sip of my coffee. I could sit here all day. Maybe I will. But here Landry arrives. And we have had this scene before with everyone showing up to do various things. Finna to do laundry. Landry to work on carpentry and Reese to work on sketches. And I am not wanting to pursue any of their routes, so I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to stay here and finish this delicious coffee before I do anything. This is my day off, after all. We all get caught up in doing our own thing when I hear footsteps approach from the kitchen. Well, if it isn't the big boss himself. And he comes, particularly bearing new um what's the word i'm looking for uniforms that's the one okay he's saying hello to all the staff <laughs> he's still looking slightly uh disdainful about that coffee i'm on to you you're the fastest witch i mean learner we've had here yet Me to press forward. There we go. Hello, Mason. Right, I'm just making sure that Mason doesn't. Ooh. <laughs> For a second, I was worried that Mason was making that face at me, but no, no. It's the uh, the uniform. The uniform has now made an appearance. Like, no, no, I'm good. No uniform for me. Thank you very much. 
and I'm going to go down to the basement. So we're going to go and investigate and see if we can find out anything about the cat curse. Boy, this place gives me the chills. I mean it, it's like 10 degrees cooler down here than it is upstairs. Now, if I were a witch, where would my witchery and witching accessories be? I take a brief walk to the immediate left of the stairs, but there's nothing here but cafe and cat supplies. Maybe the bulk copy is also ground up and used to make arcane sigils. Or maybe I'm reaching. Uh, the right of the stairs has some more interesting stuff anyway. I kneel down to get a closer look at the curio filled with crystals when I hear something creaking above me. Crap. Is Graves going to catch me? Nah, he left. I'm hearing things. I resume my hunt. Maybe these are magic crystals after all. Creep. Creep. Hello? No answer. Maybe it's my imagination. Or maybe it's someone who's very laconic. Creak. Creak. Okay, maybe it's not. I know somebody's there. Creak. Are you trying to sneak up on me or something? I'm not going to fall for that. You're so noisy. D oh, it's just you. Just me. Think something was going to get you? You can't blame me. It's creepy down here with all these specimens and things. I like it. Yes, you said. Oh, right. Yeah, it's quiet. So, you come down here a lot? <laughs> come here often? Of course, supplies are down here. That, that's not what I meant. I know. She's being kind of chatty, you know, for Mason, in her own way. I feel like this is the most we've ever talked. You like all this collection stuff, too? Yeah. Ever look through it? Well, only a little. Want anything good? Uh, just a book. It's kind of hard to explain what it's about, I guess. I kind of feel like she wouldn't believe me if I tried to explain it now. We just barely started talking, and I'm not going to bust out with, Hey, I found a magic spell book! Nah. Boring. Look around more. Wow, I didn't take you for the snooping type. I guess you caught me doing exactly that, though. She's just kind of staring now. I'm not sure what to do, so I kneel by the curio and start rooting around. What kind of stuff did you find, anyway? Here. I feel her kneel down right next to me. I'm not sure if she wants me to move or something to give her space, but she doesn't seem to mind right now. I'm just going to stay next to her. Look. She reaches over me for a weird, lumpy-looking rock. She rests her arm on my shoulder then drops the rock in my hands. It's a cool rock. Turn it over. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, it's a geode. Duh. Yeah. Oh, she liked geode. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see... Is she smiling? She's smiling. Just a little. Amethyst. Oh, is that your favourite crystal gem? It's really pretty. Do you like crystals? Who wouldn't? You're right. <laughs> I used to collect quartz as a kid. Oh, this, the basement is where you make revelations about people's collecting habits. I wouldn't have expected that. Hmm. I wonder if she's into that whole healing crystal thing. Maybe she knows something about magic after all? I mean, probably not. I don't know, you'd be surprised. I mean... They all, they're all under a curse. They all work for a witch. I'm not going to ask, at least. She'd look at me like I had three heads. You don't seem the type, that's all. I bet you'd look really cool with a quartz point necklace, though. I should keep that in mind. I wonder when her birthday is. Aw, oh, skipping ahead to wanting to buy jewellery already, Avery? Heh, <laughs> maybe. She gives my shoulder a light slap and stands up. I'm going back up. Oh, okay. I thought we were bonding. You coming? Oh, yeah, sure, one second. Yay. She likes me. I mean, she tolerates me. Well, that was a bust, mostly. It's nice to talk to Mason, though, I guess. It feels good to be getting closer to everyone here. It's sort of like I finally have a social life. Well, sort of. I guess I'm still hanging out with a bunch of cats one way or another. 
But back to the drawing table on this curse business, huh? I drift from person to person, helping everyone with what they're doing for a while, but eventually the urge takes over. I just want to play with the cats. And we all know how this turns out. Excuse me. The last few times I've done this, my throat ended up hurting quite a bit, so I have got plenty of liquids with me today. Ah, now we get to eat dinner together. And I get pad thai from the local Thai place. And we get to learn about how, yes, Graves used to be in a band. Oh, that's right. It's, uh... It's Rocked. Hello, Rocked. Of course, I don't know who you are yet, so... Bye, Rocked! Bye! May our paths never cross again, except obviously they're going to, because I've played this before. Okay, but next time I'm gonna not die. Just saying. Oh, creepy dude who kills me in one of these timelines. Right. Goes to the back alley. Stairs in the window. Leaves a rusty handprint. Be careful with the rust, it's contagious. And I think Grays knows something's up. And I am going to make Mochi a model cat out of uh, soda cans. I'm surprised I didn't get to tell um, Mason about my soda tab collection. But I guess you can't recycle the dialogue for everything, can you? Mochi is unimpressed with my work of art. I am unappreciated in my time. This bicycle is also unappreciated in its time. I mean, you could say it's modern art, but let's be honest. There's some kind of bad magic going on here, so. And we arrive. No. Does not count as work. Stop that. Yes, hello, Reese. Yeah, Graves is really distracted. And I think I skipped past it, but I think... Um, Avery has been thinking that, yeah, she needs to talk to someone about this. Particularly the fact that she can do magic now. And what it might mean that there's this weird person just sort of lurking around. It's time I finally talk to someone about magic, the book, the curse, everything. I hope she doesn't kick me out of the kitchen first. I feel like I'm intruding whenever I'm here. I'm never sure if it's Mason's aura or if it's because cooking is the most mysterious magic of all. What if she doesn't believe me? What if she thinks I'm stupid? I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just starting to figure out how to read her. I don't think she's that type of person. Yeah, I mean, she only really laughs at me when, you know, I drop a bunch of boxes or shit. I hope. I don't know. It's hard to figure out without feedback, you know? She's warmed up to me, at least. I can tell that much. I don't know if she's taking pity on me because I can barely feed myself, or if... Well, well, never mind. No use speculating. You like her? Look at me standing here and gawking. I better not slack off. I try to make myself look busy. I... Oh, she's not even paying attention. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Before I met Mason, I didn't know cooking could be so artistic. Watching her prepare meals is like a dance. No. Speak in the language of dance cooking. Today's special is French toast. Oh, French toast is a very fast way to my heart. With little cat shapes seared into the bread. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing you could do, but here she is, making this adorable food as if you've been doing it since birth. 
also like how like she's really kind of big and tough, but she makes this really cute little cat donuts and cat French toast, and it's just adorable. It makes me want to learn to cook. Could, do, could I do that, like, ever? She's a natural. I don't think I could ever learn like that. Yeah, you might learn to be able to do something other than just heating stuff up, though. I mean, I've heard such things are possible. I haven't learned to do it myself. Catching flies. Eh? Mouth open, staring, gonna catch some flies. Oh, you're right. Eh. I guess she was paying attention. Paying attention to Avery? Why ever could that be? Did you come in here for something, or should I charge admission for the show? Oh, sorry. If I'm bugging you, I can come back. If this is a bad time, I mean. Didn't say I didn't like it. Oh! Don't mind the company now and again. She glances up at me and flashes up. Is that? It is! A smile! Wow! Um, now what? Is this flirting? Oh, <laughs> thanks. I mean, hold on, let me try that again. Smooth way, smooth moves, Grey. Way to get thrown off by a mild maybe flirt. So, I wanted to ask you something and talk about the cat curse. Talk while I work. Can't burn the toast. Uh, okay. Uh, so, you know, the cat curse. Not no, what cat curse? I have never heard of this cat curse. I'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, my goodness, Avery is so nervous around Mason. I think I figured out how to break it. Hmm? I figured that'd warrant at least a look, but she didn't even glance up. Is she excited or what? I mean it. Like, I never turned into a cat, right? I think I reversed it before it could take hold. I could probably do the same for you. Nah. What? That's not what I expected. I, I didn't think she'd burst into tears, danced around the kitchen or something, but... Nah? Just... Nah? Or more like, nyah, because she wants to stay a cat or something. I don't know. If you don't believe me, I can... I believe you. Just don't need it. But the others will be thrilled. You what? Don't need it. What do you mean? I'm fine with being a cat. Doesn't cause me problems. It's cool you figured it out. Definitely not what I expected. Goodness, having done um, part of Hazes' route, she's like even cooler with being a cat than he is, and he like has actually said that it helps with his anxiety, and he likes being a cat. So, what do you even say to that? I feel stupid. Like even more so than usual. I'm okay. Okay. This is fine. Get your head in the game, Grey. We can do this. Don't start singing High School Musical. Because then you'll get me started. I, uh... Maybe I'm misunderstanding. You want to be a cat forever? You'll be stuck here for the rest of your life. Eh. First real job I've had. Not going to throw that out. Hey, mine too. But, I don't know, doesn't it bother you that you can't go anywhere or do anything? I go places. Where? Home? There's lots of stuff you can do besides work and sleep. You should be able to go shopping. Don't like shopping. See movies? Cruise has DVDs. Go on dates. Oh, that silence. She slaps another piece of toast on the griddle, but I see that tick. Her mouth is twitching. That's a good sign, I think. Hmm. She pointedly flips the toast, letting the sizzle drown me out for a second. God, it smells good in here. Like vanilla and cinnamon. wonder what she smells like. What? Does she go home smelling like that? Uh, would she smell like that if she wasn't a cat when she goes home, or...? <sighs> okay, yeah, moving on. Won't you at least try? With me? <laughs> what, going on a date? No. I've got this magic manual at my place, and we could look up how to break the curse and try it out. If you want, of course. Ah, sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Thought you said I couldn't date as a cat. Ah, Mason, she's flirting! Ah, oh, crap! Oh, I mean, not as a date. I mean, 
Um, relax. It's a joke. Why don't I take a look? Really? But, got some stuff to take care of. Give me your address. I'll come after. D okay, sure. Um, I can text it to you. Can't check my phone as a cat. <coughs> so all this talk of cats is setting off my allergies. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Uh, let me find your paper and pen. I'm starting to think that Avery, like, like stumbles around her words so much around Mason to kind of make up for the shortfall of Mason's word number. I'll be here all day. You're right. I won't rush then. I'll walk. Nah. Hmm. Like Mason's very much like why use uh why use five words and one'll do and Avery's very much like words, 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 words. I run away before I can make even more of an idiot of myself. Oh my god. Could I have been more awkward? Why do I turn into a blabbering idiot every time I've seen her? Well see my earlier theory about word ratios. I thought I had game. The only game I've got is tiddlywinks. I feel like I'm about to burst into shame flames. In the news today, a trash heap of a 19-year-old kid opened her dumb mouth and then spontaneously combusted from awkwardness. Oh, we have an age now. Cool. I gotta get it together before anyone else sees me. Avery. Oh, hell no. No way. It's not fiddly. Ow. I have allergies. But Reese is almost as bad. I busy myself with organising cat toys. The red one is longer than the yellow one, but the other red one is shorter. If I arrange them by size, it'll be an ugly rainbow, so if I do it by size and colour, it'll... Avery. Are you ignoring me? What? Of course not. What is up? I wanted to see if you'd be willing to close today, but if you're able to pick up and put down the same toy over and over, I'll find someone more capable. No, it's fine. I was just testing its weight, you know, getting a feel for how the cats like it. Right. Passes the test. Good to go. Unless, of course, you have plans. Of course not. Look at that smug mug. He knows full well what he's doing. Why is everyone here so nosy? I resent that. I have plenty of plans. Like, all the time. I have a very healthy nightlife. Of course you do. But not often with other people, I imagine. Especially not co-workers. I knew it! He does know! I is he good at reading people? Or is my poker face just that bad? <laughs> Gross. I'll have to call Landry for cleanup if you don't pick that jaw up. Though that's half the cleanup we'd have to do if things get messy around here with you and Mason. What? I don't know what you mean. Ha <laughs> ha. Look, just a friendly word of warning. From a splendid assistant manager to his loyal employee. I heard you talking in the kitchen and... Be careful with her. And with yourself. What do you mean? She keeps such a distance that I don't know what would happen if you two get close, that's all. It's just a hunch. Might be nothing. But I listen to hunches. You're only worried about our only chef quitting. That too, but... I don't know. It's just a feeling, alright? I try to get help and get put on the stand. I'm not gonna thank you for eavesdropping, dude. You're just finding excuses to be nosy. Well, you say that now, but someday, when you're older and more mature, you'll thank me. Was that a Graves impression? Are you trying to imitate Graves right now? What? No! Is Graves who he has a crush on? Look at that little blush. Jeez, of course not. You are. You even copied his intonation. Oh my god, you're such a little kid. I am absolutely not. We're the same age, you and me. You can't call me a kid. All the more reason you shouldn't act like my dad, kid. No one should listen to me for advice, so they definitely shouldn't listen to you. I beg your pardon? I'm definitely the more mature one here. I'm a manager for a reason. Ha. Okay. I bet I could be just as good of a manager as you. And then I- Ahem. Oh no. Oh no. 
The words die in our throat and we freeze. Oh, she mad. We whip our heads around to the kitchen. Mason's there, hands on hips, staring at us like she can see our futures. We real loud. Ah, uh, sorry, we'll be quiet. Hmm. She doesn't look mad. She looks amused, like she's trying to hide a smile. Maybe my mind's playing tricks. Sorry, Mason, I'll discipline her properly. Hey! What? You were just as bad. <laughs> Don't be too tough. It's a real fragile one. Oh, wait, I'm not fragile. She makes a noise. Is that a laugh? And then she disappears. Did Mason laugh at me? Or with me? Probably mostly at. Maybe both. Point is, I've never heard her laugh, period. Reese looks as incredulous as I feel. I can feel his shocked gaze from here. You know what? It feels pretty cool to get special treatment from Mason. Now who's got his jaw on the ground? Clean up on Isle Reese. You can't just steal my line. That's so uncreative. Like I care. Mason kind of sort of smiled at me, and she's coming over tonight. Reese can keep blabbing until the end of the shift for all I care. I've got other things to think about. Boy, is it a long day, though. I divide my attention between checking the front and the back of the cafe. The front to see if Graves is still there. He isn't. And the back to see if Mason is still there. Of course she is. It doesn't make time go any faster. I finally find a spare pen and paper to write my address for Mason. We have to hide all the pens so that Ayn doesn't chew them up. Hunting for one, thankfully, eats up some of my time. It's like a scavenger hunt. Gotta make this nice and easy to read. I spend a little extra time putting some flourishes on my handwriting so it's clear though. Then I draw a map, then a few cats, and flowers, and oh, I'm getting carried away. I shove the paper in my pocket and get back to work. Hopefully Reese or Landry didn't see me messing around. Eons later, the sun gets to that point where it shines in the windows at that angle I hate. That means it's time for Mason to head out. Sure enough, she's already out of her apron, and the pots and pans are all nicely stacked. Oh man, I should have been in here helping her clean instead of messing around with doodles. Bonding opportunity missed. Hey, Mason, I brought you directions, like you asked, you know. Mm. I remember like it was yesterday. Is that... is that another joke? <laughs> okay, uh, here you go. Hope you like it. Hope you like it? Just bury me alive. I hand her the paper all neatly folded up into a triangle. Well, I tried to make it neat. It's kind of lumpy. Avery, only you would try to impress a woman with your map, your your direction writing, doodling, and paper folding skills. Another smile plays across her face. Oh, Mason is the only person it would work for. As long as it doesn't get me lost, it's fine. Okay, good. I drew a map too. Put my artistic skills to use. You know, just in case. Hmm. Okay, so see you later then, I guess. Where are you going? Don't worry about it. See you. Well, that means you're going to the corner store, right? What's the dealio? They're your family, right? 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 I'll find out later. Yeah, okay, bye. She, then she puts the paper in her mouth. I mean, not eating it. She fits it between her teeth and waves farewell before she steps out the door. Why would she do that? Avery, come on. She's turning into a cat, so, you know, how else is she going to carry it? I peek after her. There's a scruffy orange cat with a lumpy paper triangle in its mouth. Oh. Makes sense. Not like she has pockets. I better get cleaned up and everything too, right? Gotta get back and get ready. I rush through the closing tasks and mess up probably about 75% of them. My head's way gone by now. I'm checked out. Of the uh, romantic routes I've followed so far, Avery is definitely the most nervous when it comes to Mason. Which kind of makes sense. Mason is almost intimidating, just because she's the strong, silent type. 
Not to mention she's so pretty. Poor Landry has to clean up after me. Eventually he just tells me to head home. I think that's because he knows it'll be faster to do it himself. Sorry Landry. I feel light on my feet going home. Maybe I should make dinner. I bet Mason would like that. What would I make though? How does cooking even work? I think about it the rest of the walk home. I'm not sure you want your first attempt cooking to be... Oh dear. Damn, if I was going to cook, I'd need to buy things to cook. There's got to be something here, anything. There's all the cans lying around, so I'm sure I'll find something edible eventually. <coughs> you won't stop making that gross, low purr meow as he waddles behind me. I shouldn't blame him. The only reason I'm ever in the kitchen is to feed him, so it makes sense he'd assume. Tough luck, buddy. I'm on a mission. What did Aunt Wendy leave behind? Some pasta and funky shapes. Some, I think those are spices. I recognise cinnamon and red pepper, but the rest are a mystery. Canned veggies? Not bad. I can work with this. You can't work with this, Avery. Don't be a hero. In the fridge? Ooh. Well, smells like I have yoghurt now. Let me just take care of that. Man, what a mess. All these leftovers I don't remember ordering. This is turning into a stinky excavation. I hope this clears up before Mason gets here. I open some windows and spray some of Aunt Wendy's sickly sweet air freshener directly into the fridge. That should do it. It won't! When the dust settles, I review my findings. All I'm left with is some random crap. How am I supposed to make dinner out of this? Oh, just order something, Avery. Don't try to impress Mason with your cooking skills when you have never cooked before. Oh, gee, this is too hard. You have it so easy getting all your food in cans and bags. Brr. Think, Avery. Think. I brainstorm. I arrange the potential ingredients before me. When all said and done, I have created a beautifully lopsided pyramid of cans and boxes. Hope it doesn't fall over. I guess I should stick to pizza. If I order some now, it'll get here before- what's that noise? Is that a cat scratching? I glare at Mochi, but he's sitting behind me like his usual self. Must be something else. It gets the- If there's a cat scratching and you're expecting a mason over, put two and two together please, Avery. Avery. Oh crap, she's here! I thought she'd ring the doorbell, but of course she can't. Yeah, sorry. Hold on a sec. I bound at the door, nearly tripping over a box of soda cans. Why didn't I clean up on the way? I try to look all nonchalant when I open the door. That'll impress who, where is she? Oh, just gotta adjust my gaze downwards to account for the uh, height difference. Hey. Come on in. I was just, um, dinner. Just, um, dinner. Yeah, um, I was going to make something with whatever stuff was around here, but that's probably not going to work. Uh, I'll order pizza. You like pizza? No. Nope, never mind. I can't make this work. <laughs> Abort relationship. Not when it's your excuse not to cook. Oh, she meant no like that. Okay, we're back on. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, but come on, cooking's so hard. Even harder if you don't try. Yeah, yeah, but it's such a hassle and I'm just gonna screw it up. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's what I said, I always do it wrong. So let's just order takeout. No, because you cook alone. <coughs> My heart! Ow! I learned to cook because my grandparents showed me. It was nice. We spent good time together, telling stories, jokes, you know. I can do that for you. <sighs> it's so, so sweet. There's something about when the really stoic characters show a soft side. Oh, um, yeah, I'd like that. Okay, let's cook. See, this I can get behind. It's still going to be a disaster, but at least it will be a bonding disaster. I didn't know if it was possible for cats to smile, but Mason demonstrates before I get the chance to ponder it much. Wow, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. 
Well, almost. Her human smile is cuter. But, uh, how? I, I don't think you can hold a pan like that. I'm no expert, but I feel like opposable thumbs are pretty important to cooking. <laughs> Supervising. I can tell you what to do, you do it. Isn't there a movie like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to fit her under a chef's hat. What, are you going to sit on my shoulder and control me? Mason saunters into the kitchen and leaps up on a counter. Mochi gives me such a look. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a double standard, but I don't care. You're still not allowed up there, buddy. You don't turn into a cute co-worker. Here's fine. She glances over the haphazard food pyramid I made. Her ears twitch. What's that supposed to mean? Is that good or bad? It's what you're working with? Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. It's fine. Olive oil? Oh, maybe. Let me search around. Get two saucepans and a skillet. Aye, aye. Oh, it's going to be the cleanup that's going to be the hard part. I start reading around for the rest of the stuff. I guess this is olive oil. The label's kind of peeled, but Mason nods when I hold it up. The pots and pans are the cleanest dishware in my possession. Don't need to wash something you've never used, after all. Too true. I excavate them from the pile of unidentifiable kitchen doodads. Okay, now what? Follow all my steps. Exactly. Or you will die. Roger. So then I cook for the first time. Ever. Well, the first time I'm willing to count. Mason announces the steps to me, and I follow them as best I can. It goes well, for the most part. I almost start a fire when I drop some of those squiggly noodles into the burner. It smells a little burny in here, but the smell of delicious food... But soon, sorry, the smell of delicious food is overpowering. I put a little flourish on it while we're sautéing veggies. <laughs> Mason touches me with her paw and sternly shakes her head. Don't be a hero, kid. Guess you don't go shaking pans around then. Why does she do that? It looks so cool. Yeah, because she's experienced, Avery. It sucks that she can't help me more directly. Straining the pasta with just one set of hands gets messy. One day, I'd like to try this with human, Mason. I bet we could do cute kitchen food fights and stuff. Whoops, better pay attention or I'll burn the veggies. This time, when all's said and done, I've created this pasta and veggie thing, and it actually looks edible. Would have been better with fresh ingredients, but I'm the purist. More like a purist. Am I right? Am I right? I am not right. Well, would you look at that? I did it. We did that. I told you it's more fun together. Yeah. Maybe we could do this more often. Like, I mean, if you don't mind, of course. Hmm. Gotta find the time, but... Yeah, okay. I don't know how I'm going to be able to eat this now because my stomach's already full of butterflies. We settle in for dinner. It's not the best thing I've ever had and it's certainly nothing compared to Mason's cooking, but it's a start. I feel pretty good. She seems to be enjoying it too. I don't think Mason's the type to pretend like to, pretend to like something to spare feelings, so I feel pretty damn accomplished. I love how they're getting so carried away with this that they kind of seem to have forgotten about the magic book. Oh, excuse me. We talk while we eat. Well, it's more that I ramble and Mason listens. Or at least pretends to. I'm probably boring her. I should stop, right? Right. I do. She looks back at me expectantly. Whoa, she's actually paying attention. Having her attention flusters me. I fumble with my dish and nearly add pasta to the couch. Better get back to business before I psych myself out. Wanna look at the book now? Uh, yeah, sure. Cool, um, let me get it. I scoop up the different bowls and then, after a quick loop into the kitchen to dump them in the sink, I'll get to them someday. <laughs> yep, <laughs> sounds about right. I dip into the bedroom and grab the book. You're gonna love this, it's pretty cool. I settle down on the couch, huddled in my favourite spot against the armrest, and pop the book open. I show it to Mason like I'm setting up a magic trick. So, now you don't see me. With a great flourish, I put the bookmark over the garbled text to show her the transformation. And now you do. Ah. 
had one of those 3D trick books as a kid too. No, no, it's not a trick, it's magic. Didn't you see the word literally jump under the bookmark? Jump out under the bookmark? Just messing with you. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. She doesn't seem all that surprised. Tough crowd. Maybe she has more experience with magic than you think. The really cool stuff is inside. You ready? I'll read it out for you. You just relax and listen, okay? I think it'll be easier that way. Hmm. I clear my throat with a big noise and roll my shoulders. Gotta speak from the diaphragm, just like I said in Drama Club. You are trying so hard to impress her. I mean, I think that's what they said. Not like I ever got a speaking role. Mason doesn't have to know that. I start reading, and though I trip over some of the words, just like I always do when I read too fast, Mason's attention remains sharp and focused. She's paying more attention to me than she has anyone else. She's so attentive to me. I can't figure out why. Do you need me to explain with a picture book? Maybe because I bothered to pay attention to her? Has anyone else tried? After a while of reading and some short, flubbed demonstrations, Mason stands and stretches. She walks away from me over to the other armrest. I wonder if I spoke too soon. Maybe she's bored? Keep going. Oh, she noticed me falter. I pretend like I was taking a break to cough, then get back to reading. She climbs onto the back of the couch and walks towards me. Guess she's still stretching? I keep breathing. Is she going to curl up in my lap? But then I feel two paws on my shoulder, and before I know it, the cat's curled around my neck. Not just any cat, a mason cat. Um! Is this okay? I can move. No, it's fine. This is... it's nice. I think so. Oh, man. How dare you be so cute? This is weird. This is super weird. I'm getting flustered by a cat. Am I weird for that? There's weirder on the internet, honey. I'm definitely weird. In a weird situation. It's so weird that weird is starting to sound weird. You were saying? I was having an internal monologue because you decided to make a move. Not exactly a move. I mean, literally, you moved, but... I, I You're a cat, so... Okay. Oh, right. Um, so... I pick up as best I can. I think I'm reading the same paragraph for a second time, but... Mason doesn't seem to notice or mind. Oh, excuse me. What's that rumble on the back of my neck? Uh, oh. It makes sense that she'd purr as a cat, but... Wow. What's that supposed to mean? It means she's getting ready to attack. No, I'm kidding. I read more, and she grows quiet. I turn my head to ask her why, and I get my answer. She's fallen asleep. Should I wake her? It's only 10pm. That's not late at all. Yeah, but if she wakes up early and she works hard all day? Oh, if I consider how early she's at the cafe every day. I asked a lot of her to come out this late and listen to me. She isn't even interested in breaking the curse right now. Why'd she come out? Is it... Nah, forget it. We'll have to try again. Maybe the next cooking lesson. In the meantime, I might as well get back to reading. I don't want to disturb her. Are you going to just, like, stay that all night so she'll sleep, stay sleeping there? I wake up on the couch with the book in my lap and a crick in my neck. When did I fall asleep? I don't even remember it. I feel a warm lump by my side. Is that Mason? No, just Mochi. What are you doing, you sack of cat food? Brrr. It's like the other cat was hugging you, so I wanted a turn. He flops over, belly up, and makes biscuits in the air at me. Look at him mug for attention. But seriously, where does she go? She's not anywhere on the couch. Maybe she slept somewhere else? Maybe she went home? I unfold my creaky legs and look around. Mason? Hey? She's not in here. I peek into the bedroom. Not there either. What the hell? How would she leave? Out the window, maybe? She can't open doors. I don't remember opening the door either. Unless I sleepwalked. That would be the strangest thing to happen to me lately, but I doubt it's likely. 
I see a flurry of movement from the corner of my eye. Is that her? No, just the tree branch outside the window. Oh, maybe that's how. Did she climb out the window? Why? It's way earlier than I usually get up, but I feel wide awake. There's no use going back to sleep while a certain cat chef is at large. Might as well go out for breakfast. Maybe I'll find her along the way? And I believe we're going to uh, leave it at that mystery for now, because I am getting terribly congested and that's making it a bit difficult to read. I mean, read out loud. Obviously I can still read. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this for now. Save the game. We will resume uh, on our breakfast and or mason hunt. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care and good night.